I wanted to go over number one on part B and C. I think there was some confusion there. So to start, I wanted to talk about B, which is estimate the slope of the tangent line at P by averaging the slope of two secant lines. So the question was kind of how do I pick the points that I want to pick? To find the equation of the tangent line at this point C right here. So the equation of this line is our goal. But to find a slope, we need two points. So what do we do? We don't have enough information. We have information about this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point. So to approximate this red line, what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope between this point here and this point here. Okay, so that's going to be our slope 1. We see that's a bit too steep. And then we're also going to find the slope between this point and this point here. So we're kind of straddling the point where we want to actually find the tangent line on both sides, right? So then we'll find this slope here, which is not steep enough. So again, we called this slope 1, we called this slope 2. And we are saying that the slope of the red line is approximated by averaging the blue line and the slope of the black line. Okay, so we're approximating the slope of the tangent line by finding the slope of the two secant lines on both sides, okay? So you can see from the solutions that's exactly what I did. I took the slope between, this is at 10, between 10 and 15, and this was the slope between 15 and 20. So I took those slopes, that's my slope one and my slope two, and I averaged them. And that was my approximation. Then in part C, it just says use a graph of the function to estimate the slope of the tangent line at P. So let me go to my solutions again. And literally what I did was I just drew the graph and then I just drew in the line. So in this graph here, I drew in this red line and then I just picked two points that it hit. And then I was like, oh, maybe it hits this point here. So I'll use that as my point A. And then it hits this point here. So I'll use that as my point B. And then I just found the slope between A and B because that would be the slope of the red line I drew in. Now, you know, it really depends on the accuracy of that line that you drew in, how close to the tangent line approximation it's going to give you. So we're not really going to be using the strategy in part C here, but we will be using the strategy in part B quite a bit. So that's the one that I really, really want you to understand that when you want to find the slope at, say, if you want to find the instantaneous velocity at this point at 15, then what you would do is you would find the slope between 10 and 15, you would find the slope between 15 and 20, and you would average those two. Now, before I close, I just want to say one more thing, and that is what if I asked you to estimate the slope of the tangent line at 5, 694? So what if I asked you to approximate the slope right here at one of my endpoints? Well, in this case, you know, before, at 15, I was finding the slope between here, I was finding the slope between here, and I was averaging the two because this is in the middle. There is nothing on the other side. So my best approximation here would just be to find the slope between 5 and 10, and that would be my best way to guess this instantaneous velocity. And it's not as good an approximation, of course, as if I can straddle it with data on both sides. Okay, so the important part, if you have data on both sides, use it average it. If you don't, then you just find the slope to the point that is closest. And hopefully this helps.